morning. And welcome to the um, introductory class for what we call the Fountain of Life Yoga. And it's called the Fountain of Life because up until uh, March, we were teaching, I was teaching class over the Fountain of Life in front of uh, Cathedral City, City Hall. And I've been teaching here in, in my home since then, but we just kind of come full circle. Eight years ago, I started teaching yoga here in my, uh, in my house. This is the house, the historic house of Agnes Pelton built in 1938, and she used to practice a yoga called Agni Yoga. Um, I will get started in a bit about the, the um, a workout itself, a modified introductory beginner's workout um, and in a series of five, So, um, but I just want to give you a little bit of background first. So to start with, um, in regard to um, learning something, I always ask, whenever I do um, workshops, I ask people to practice the, the um, adage of the Zen empty cup, the Zen empty cup. So what it is is you come to this session with a cup of knowledge or your understanding of yoga, your preconceived notions of yoga, perhaps you've been practicing it before so you have your own idea of yoga, but um, what I ask you to do in this Zen practice is to empty your cup for the hour that we'll be here and, uh, and take in what I give you you can put it into your cup, and the things that you like, you can keep the stuff you don't like and get rid of. But just to be open to um, to a different idea. Particularly, I know I am when I go used to a certain teacher that um, I'm used to it, and I'll be taking class, and I go, oh, they didn't, my other teacher didn't do it like this. Well, you want to be open to it so that you can get the full benefit of what I have to offer you. And, um, and again, what I do within the context of the class is you can bring in, once you get, uh, once you get into the flow of the class, you can do your uh, exercises that are personal to you, that are uh, custom to, to your own workout uh, within the context of, of what we're doing. Okay, so back to what I teach. Um, I teach, I've been practicing and teaching for over 50 years yoga, and um, um, I come from a background of, struct, of, of alignment. So what we're trying to do in Yoga Chi is to bring yourself in alignment physically, mentally, spiritual. Um, if you open yourself up to it emotionally and it comes to the image uh, and spiritually and it comes back to the original idea of yoga which is um, uh, integrating the body mind and spirit um, ultimately I think one of the, the um, good things in the world really really bad things of yoga first coming to when yoga came to America and started to be taught in gyms it was as it became um, framed as a, as a physical workout so you have people who want to do as many exercises as they can, hold a position as long as they can. The longer you do it, the more physically fit you are. And how I practice it, and I would like you to practice it, is do what's going to be appropriate for you. But ultimately, what I'm trying to do it by the end of the hour is to have an experience of um, uh, bringing balance into your life, and especially for the moment, and, and to integrate your body, mind, spirit. Um, okay, so not the least of which was the physical, the physical alignment. You can get a, a purely just a physical workout from this as well. Um, if you open up yourself to the full, the, the full expanse of it, you'll get a, a, a more fuller. You'll have a, it'll be more beneficial for you in, uh, to get the full benefit. Um, let's see. So there are three. I, part of my my my, my uh, discipline or my practice is to bring the um, Hatha Yoga practices and join it with my, my, my studies of um, energy work which comes from the healing techniques of the Shaolin monks. So it comes from like seven generations of healing techniques from the Shaolin monks that see the world, view the world, and have an understanding of the world, the universe as energy. And also like in the scientific world, you know, it's um, we're pretty much just, we, we take out all the other philosophies, it's just energy. And the other side, which is yoga, which comes with the, the yoga asana as the position, the different positions. And I use those positions as sort of like as a, as a movement vocabulary or body vocabulary. Um, many people know you know the idea of um, downward facing dog, warrior one, warrior two. You know all these positions, this, the sitting, child's pose. So you can we use I use those because we're familiar with that. I use those uh, positions as a movement body vocabulary. To, um, uh, to do the work. 
um, I do some uh, adjustments on, on how I've codified some of that movement. So um, it, it, um, I'm trying to alleviate the mystery of what we're doing in yoga. So it's, it's beneficial to you at the same time, towards the end, add some mystery. Okay, so we have the energetic part, the yoga part, the scientific part. I'm not a scientist, I'm gonna leave that alone. So in the Shaolin monks part, um, their energy is, is, is categorized in three different uh, ways. There's um, the lower energy, which is Jing energy, which is like um, the microwave, or you know when you turn on your radio or your TV, that these waves are transmitted through the air and the, and the television is your receptor and it gets those waves and you get a, 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 a picture. Um, that's Jing energy, J-I-N-G. Qi energy is um, your body energy. Okay, so it's like, can I backtrack a little bit? So my Jing energy is also like um, gravity. It's um, the moon, you know, um, the moon has its, uh, has its influence on, on the tides. So those are explained by, by the, the energetic force that is Jing energy. Um, qi energy is your body energy. It's, um, for instance, you'd be sitting here like this and you in a doctor's office, for instance, and you're not feeling that great and you're waiting to see the doctor and you're kind of bored and you're waiting, you're waiting. So your Qi energy is down. And all of a sudden, somebody flings open the door with a machine gun and all of a sudden, everybody does this and your Qi energy goes up. So. <laughs> There are ways of, 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 of elevating our chi energy so it supports us, supports our life, and also how we can do it in a yoga class. So when we come to class, we can just build our chi energy. Chi energy also attends to, like, like feng shui, like feng, not like, attends to feng shui. So the, the, a house is built, and the day that, and the time that the, the roof is put on, the, the energy, certain energy, your chi energy, the chi energy is, is captured in the house. And so there's certain positions the way the way the house is facing, certain areas where um, um, th that are weaknesses, and there are ways what feng shui attempts to do is to strengthen those areas. There are different schools of feng shui too, but I won't get into that right now. And then there's jing and uh, zhen energy. Zhen energy is your thought energy, and um, you can think of it as intuition. For instance, um, you're, you haven't seen or heard from a body, someone for a long time, and all of a sudden the phone rings, or somebody mentions the name of this person, he goes, wow, I was just thinking of that person. Or you have a hunch, you're driving down the street, and you said, I think I'm gonna take a left turn here only because, um, I don't know, I, have, I just feel like doing it this way. Well, it turns out, maybe your hunch was great because later on you find out there was a roadblock down this side. You know, th th those are happenstances, but they're intuition, and actually, um, is when you're when you're aligned and you're in tune, your your your, tu your intuition just clicks in. Um, as we get older, the you know the better our intuition is, the um, the stronger our intuition, the the better served we are. So um, I want in in the work, I want to use our our, our Zhen energy to help us to support our Qi energy. Um, there are the various when I have when I do a workshop with you in person, uh, the very different ways I can show you how you can strengthen yourself, and I try to attend to that while we're doing that. But meanwhile, um, let me get into the the work itself. So I talked about uh, structural alignment. That um, because of my background in dance, and this is physical. Um, we 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 our aim is to be in alignment, so you can balance. Right, so the physical balance, dealing with the physical balance, you want to align the bones, sort of like building blocks. You know, the more efficient you are at stacking one block or the other, the higher you can go. Once it goes off, then it gets to be um, infirm. Um, and muscles move the bones, right? So muscles, muscles move the bones to be in alignment. And your thought energy, your mind is what tells the muscles what to, unless it's an involuntary muscle, the mind tells the muscles what to do to get your body back in alignment. So for instance, I'm sitting here in a chair, and because of gravity, I want to sit like this all the time, right? But I want, I want to make sure, what I want to try to do to get alignment is get my shoulders right over my hips. And then I want to bring my neck in alignment with my spine. So quite often, hap what quite often happens is when um, I'll tell people to like, um, bring us, get yourself taller, the idea is that they'll do, do that. But what you want to do is bring your jaw, the corner of your jaw bones back in alignment and therefore it keeps your neck in alignment with your spine. 
So I'll attend to this when we're in a standing position as well. But in the, um, let's see, let me introduce to the idea of uh, one, the, first, the first asana is the chair position. So in the traditional um, Hatha Yoga, the chair position is body at a diagonal and the arms are here. So I break it down so that there's a, we ha I have an upright chair, and it's generally upright chair, you just bend your knees, and then I have a diagonal chair, back to the upright chair, and then straight to a standing position. Okay, so similarly, in the chair here, when you're sitting in a literal chair, your spine is upright, you go to the diagonal, come back to the upright, and then you stand up in the up to, to a standing position. Um, and then I'll do variations on that to, to warm your body up. Um, so that's the first asana that you learned. Um, let's see. Let's get into that for right now. So if you have a chair nearby, um, th this class I'm going to uh, give you, give you uh, examples of being in the chair and we actually do it in the actual practice and standing. You may not need a chair, I just want you to give you an option. And then the next session, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a combination of both. So in the chair position here, as I said, there is a, the, 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 the traditional chair position is here. We're going to start with the upright chair here for me. So your shoulders are in alignment with your hips. Your jaw bones are back, so your neck is in alignment. But energetically, I want you to think of your spine as being the core. You're going to try to lengthen the spine as much as you can. You can think of it as like a puppet, so you'll be lengthening from the crown of your head. But you can also think of it energetically, the core of your spine is um, a shaft of light. Okay, there's a shaft of light that's, we, that's energetically moving through your spine. And the more engaged we get our spine, the more open we can get the spaces between each vertebra. And then more light comes through it. So if you think about lengthening your spine, invigorating, um, and energizing your spine, you want to think of lengthening, lengthening with a shaft of light going through it. You want to maintain that. When, uh, when you go to your diagonal, the, the, the diagonal, the energy in the, the spine still, can, still works. So you go to the diagonal, the crown of your head, the top of the light is shining this way to the tailbone and still go down to your, to your tailbone. And when you come back to the upright chair, you lift it. So, um, so that's my diagonal chair and upright chair. Muscles move the bones. So um, I'm gonna stand up just so I can describe this a little bit better. So I talk about your shoulders being aligned with your hips, but also the foundation of that is your, are, are your feet. So you want to have your hips in alignment with your ankles in alignment with your shoulders. Uh, when you go to your upright chair, all you're going to do is bend, your toes are going forward. You're going to go to bend your knees to the upright chair, go to your diagonal chair, go to the upright chair, and then lift from the crown of your head. Once more, upright chair, diagonal chair, upright chair, and lift. Good. So energetically, we talked about the spine being invigorated. I also want you to think about your arms, the, the length, the reaching energy of your arms. Um, try to imagine or envision an energy start, source that starts from your shoulder and it shoots down your arm and like light it goes past your fingertips like laser beams. Yeah, so you're not just um, putting your arm by your side along your, your, your torso. You're actually reaching down, shooting energy through your fingertips and it's not unlike if you had crutches under your armpit and you're pushing down. So what happens on both sides Energy source to, the sh source to the shoulder, energy source, you're gonna reach down. Fingertips, your laser beams are shooting through your fingertips, or you can think about um, crutches on the armpits. And you keep those arms activated, and you go to your diagonal chair, come back to your upright chair, go to your diagonal chair, and upright chair. If you're doing from a standing position, it goes from the upper, your, your arms are, are extended, you go to your upright chair, you go to your diagonal chair, Go to the upright chair and straight leg into the crown again. So, from somebody walking by. I just, who just has not heard me chatter just now to hear, giving you instructions about energy. They may just see you as going, oh, he's bending his knees and he's going to this, uh, over to the diagonal and he's coming back up and he's straightening his legs. But what's actually happening is. You're lengthening from the crown of your head, you're shooting laser beams down your arms, you 
pressing down from under your armpits. But additionally, um, the imagery that I've used is if you had uh, a zipper that went from your crotch to your navel to your sternum, you're going to pull that zipper up. And what happens is normally if you relax those muscles, your pelvis will tilt back. When you pull that zipper up from your crotch to your navel to your sternum, then your pelvis comes upright. So when you go to your upright chair, rather than releasing your pelvis back, you're going to try to keep your pelvic girdle upright and just go straight down. Then you go to your diagonal chair, come back to your upright chair, and then lengthen from the crown of your head. So for some, again, for someone just walking by, they don't know what we're doing, all it looks like is you're bending your knees and you're going to the forward and you're going to the upright, you're going to straight. But in fact, you're doing energetically, you're radiating, radiating away from your center. Your, your arms are shooting, are activated like electricity. Your spine is, electric, is ele lengthened like electricity. You're pulling your zipper up so you keep your pelvis upright. And all of that is, is activated. You don't release it when you go to your upright chair, when you go to a diagonal chair, when you go to an upright chair and straighten. Okay? You can just go, oh, bend and diagonal, but, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but if you integrate the other parts, the, the, the concept of energy, um, you'll get more of a work out of it. I'm already sweating a little bit from just from doing that. Um, so, let's see, another thing about positions. Um, let's say there are headlights on your shoulders and headlights on your hips. The head, this is the front, headlights are going forward. Okay. So even when you're sitting here in your chair, your headlights are going forward. And you go to your upright, uh, to your diagonal, you should, now your headlights are going down to the diagonal, and when you come back up, your headlights are going forward. So this matters when we're starting to do these standing positions, which I will give you alternative positions from, from um, and when you're sitting in the chair, when you're doing chair yoga. So, there are three lunges. The first one, I'm just gonna do the, the, the standing one. So the first one, I'm gonna go sideways here. Now my front is here. My, head, my hips and shoulders are facing, this is my front now, for now, our purposes. When I go to the upright chair, I'm gonna take my, my left leg back to a standing lunge. In the standing lunge, my weight stays forward, but I'm balancing on the ball of my foot here, right? So facing forward, it just looks like this. The weight is forward, my hips and shoulders are going forward, but I'm balancing on the ball of my foot. There are ways you can do a standing, uh, you can vary the arms from the standing position. It could be here, it could be here, or here, with the, th with the three positions I normally do it in, or you can do it from the prayer position. So the standing lunge, you're balancing on the ball, balancing on the ball of your foot, and uh, the, uh, the variation of that standing position is warrior one. So my head, my hip, my headlights are going forward. I'm going to spin the back foot out. So my, now my back foot is flat on the floor, but my hips and shoulders are going forward still. So in the warrior position, the classic warrior position is here. You lift. You're going to lengthen from your waist. Your weight is forward and not back. I'm going to go sideways so you can see again. So your weight is forward of the front leg rather than back. And the difference between warrior one. And the standing lunge, the standing lunge is you flip over and you're balancing on the ball of the foot, the leg is straight, and then warrior one is flat behind you. Okay, so um, remember that. Right. So the, the reason why I took that opportunity to, to explain where your hips and shoulders are going is because now we're either facing forward or to the side. Let's say we are in here warrior one again in front. Head, hips and shoulders are going forward. When you do warrior two, you're gonna open your arms to the side and your hips, are going to be sh hips and shoulders are gonna be facing the side. Okay, again, warrior one, the hips are facing forward. I will generally do a transition to go to prayer first and then transition. to transition to warrior two. In warrior two, the front leg is bent, my hips and shoulders are facing the side, and my gaze is going forward. So let's do a little transition again. Let's go to prayer. Let's transition to warrior 
row one. Hips and shoulders forward, the back foot is flat. Take a breath in, exhale, close to prayer. And we're going to transition to warrior two. Good, let's just do the other side so I can feel balance in you too. Deep breath in, close to prayer. Arms down to the side. Your hips and shoulders are going forward. Your toes are going forward. Go to your upright chair. And then take your right leg back to a standing, to a standing lunge. Again, in the standing lunge, hips and shoulders are going forward. Your weight is forward of the front leg rather than back. You're balancing on the ball of the back foot, and as much as you can, the back leg is straight. Um, your knee should be facing down, the back knee facing down rather than turning out that way. Yeah, so the knee is going nice. It's your standing lunge. And then from here, we're going to transition to warrior one. So you're going to spin your back foot out, keep your hips and shoulders going forward, lunge forward, take a breath in, transition to prayer to warrior two. Hips and shoulders are facing the side. My gaze is going forward. And let's transition back to warrior one, go to prayer. Transition to warrior one, the back foot is flat on the floor. Hips and shoulders are facing forward. And let's backtrack, let's go back to our standing lunge. Just arms to the side this time for the standing lunge. Flip the foot over. And just come to a standing position. Good, all right. Um, Let's see what I was going to say about the chair. All right, so here we are again. Upright chair, diagonal chair, upright chair, diagonal chair, upright chair. If you don't need the chair, and how I typically, normally teach in my class, we, this is one of our warm-ups. We go to the, your feet are together, your inner thighs are together, you're pulling your zipper up, your arms are activated, your spine is activated, you're lifting from the crown of the head, dropping your tailbone. Keep all that going, you go to the upright chair, go to your diagonal chair, upright chair, and lift. Now I do one of my warm-ups is what I call slices. So we start in a standing position, your arms are up. From here, we're gonna slice through the diagonal chair, and then come up in one piece. Slice through the diagonal chair, you need to lift up. Exhale, slice through the diagonal chair, you need to lift up, slice the diagonal chair, and then lift up. And now we're going to go to our side. Take a breath in, exhale, slice to the side, you need to lift, exhale, slice to the side, you need to lift, exhale, slice to the side, you need to lift, to the side, and lift. We're going to do three more forward, and if you can, we're going to recover by just very briefly going up on your toes. Okay, pull your zipper up. Arms, um, laser beam to shooting fingertips, lengthening the, your spine, exhale diagonal chair, up on your toes and drop, diagonal chair, inhale up, diagonal chair, let's do one more, inhale up, and then you're going to hold this. From this position, let me just turn sideways, you can see, from your diagonal chair, reach one arm forward, and then switch, other side, breathe, and then back, and then both arms, and then come up in one piece, inhale up, exhale, float the arms down, deep breath in, and close to prayer. Good, shake it out. Later on, I'll give you some other options. So, if you're in the chair, you can do the same exercise, same warm up exercise, bring your, your, um, your butt over to the edge of your chair. Take a deep breath in, arms up. Slice the diagonal chair, arms are back. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, diagonal chair. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, diagonal chair. And if now let's do slices to the side. Exhale, slice. Inhale, lift. Exhale, slice. Inhale, lift. Exhale, slice. Inhale, lift. Exhale, slice, and a lift. Okay, reach up as high as you can without uh, lifting your shoulders. So drop your shoulders down. Lengthen your waist, and then float your arms down. Let's take three breaths. Inhale up, exhale down. Inhale, lift, exhale down. Inhale, lift, and down. So a couple of things about breathing. So you have your lungs, right, and through here. When we breathe, you want 
want to breathe our lung, fill our lungs up to full capacity. So rather than a shallow breath, put your hands on your, your lungs right here, or on your chest, sorry, on your lungs. And feel your lungs inflate, and then deflate, exhale. Again, inflate, and then exhale. What I would like you to try to do is to image yourself breathing from the back, filling up the back of your lungs as well. Okay, so we're going to go... Let's actually take five counts to breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. And five counts to let it out. One, two, three, four, five. Again, in, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. So uh, over the course of time, I'll give you a different, those are pranayana exercises, breathing exercises, breathing and energetic exercises. I'll, I'll teach you. Um, other ones, um, and you still one because of what's going on in the um, of the pandemic, because the pandemic, and it's a respiratory thing, um, uh, it's a medical challenge. I'm going to teach you a way of inflating your lungs and then expelling what's ever in there. All right, so we're going to breathe in for five, and then you're going to exhale for one, and it's going to be like a punch when you exhale. So it's, it'll look like this: one, two, three, four, five. Ha! Again, one, two, three, four, five. Ha! Oh, I forgot to tell you. We're going to breathe in through our nose and we're going to release through our mouth. You're going to breathe in for five, fill your lungs up with air in the front and to the back recesses of your spine as well, and push it all out in one. So here we go again. One, two, three, four, five. <gasps> again, one. <gasps> again, one. So you can do that throughout the day, particularly, particularly, particularly for us in the desert. You know, you can do it out of the heat. It just kind of um, apparently the um, the virus is sensitive to heat, so you're gonna get it in and out and just kind of expel everything that's that to the, the recess of our lungs. All right, so I'm gonna give you a moment to, to um, get a drink of water, hydrate yourself, and you come back. You know, when you when you come back, you're gonna meet me here in mountain, where you're standing with your feet, your toes going forward. Hips are, uh, feet are hip width apart, palms are facing forward, and I'll see you in about 30 seconds. Okay, here we are, hydrated, and back to mountain. <clears throat> so in this position, you know, the mountain, the idea of mountain is just grounded. Um, you feel the full, as the full effects of gravity, right? So, and, and you, so you, your, 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 your feet are, ground, are grounded either to your mat. I'm going to stay on the mat so you can experience that with me. Yeah, so the front of your mat and you feel grounded. So close your eyes. And I'd like you to, to be conscious of breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good, now I want you to direct your attention to the surface of your skin. All the sensations, the sensory perceptions of the surface of your skin. Make a list of things that you feel, including the bottom of your feet making contact with the mat including your clothes hanging on your body, but to, to the exclusion of all else, you're trying to focus in on the surface of your skin. Good, let's redirect your attention to the sounds that you hear, everything audible. With your eyes closed, make a list of things that you hear. Good, and open your eyes. So that's an exercise, a sort of um, lifting weights with your mind. What it is is you, um, 
the intention is to be aware, as I direct you, you're aware of different sensory perceptions, but within your, the, the context of the class is you want to uh, hear stuff, feel stuff, by, and just witnessing without being distracted by them. So essentially it's a way to, to help you in meditation as well. When you hear something, or when you feel something, you're not, you're not drawn to it, you're not dragged away from it, but you maintain your center, you maintain yourself, maintain yourself being present. And it takes practice, it takes practice of, um, uh, of that weight lifting with your mind, with your brain. And uh, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, the, when I remember my first meditation teacher was saying, your mind is like a little child, you know, you'll tell them to come over and you can like tell them to do some stuff and then it'll run away and you have to call your little child back and you put it, you get them interested again and they'll play for a little bit and they'll run away again and you bring them back again. So that's what our mind is like. It's going to want to do that. Uh, even to this day, um, I, have to tr I have certain tricks to train myself to, uh, in meditation. So the deeper, the more adept you get, the deeper you can go into your meditation. So I use, uh, we do that as a um, touchstone throughout the class. Um, let's see, I've talked about the upright chair, diagonal chair, alignment. Um, we talked about pranayana. These are, even though I'm reviewing it for myself, it's really good for you as well. And I will attend to this and build on it as we go forward the next uh, four sessions. Um, let's do... Um, Oh, from the chair when we do uh, Warrior 1, the Standing Lunge in Warrior, and Warrior 1 and Warrior 2. So you're on your chair, if you're doing yoga on the chair, again, where your hips, where your headlights are facing, that's going to be a, uh, that, it's going to help, help me for, for me to describe to you where your front is. So let's say this is your front now, and we're going to go to a standing lunge, but you're doing it from the chair. So normally when you're doing the standing lunge, I tell you, we approach it by going for the upright chair, to the leg back when you're balancing on your back foot. So you can do the same thing in chair yoga by sitting, get your right cheek on the butt, on the chair, and then take your leg behind you. To the extent that you can, you know, uh, unless you have like a really tall chair, the back foot you're going to be balancing on the ball of your foot, and you're forward on the front of the, on the front of your chair. So that would be your standing lunge, a version of a standing lunge. All right. So again, to the extent you can, depending on the height of the chair, you can go to prayer, you can go to arms to the side, you can go arms up, but essentially the standing lunge in the chair would look like this. And then from warrior one, the warrior one position would be kind of, you would try to flatten out the back leg to the extent that you can, and face your torso to the side again, okay? And then from warrior two, your hips and shoulders are gonna to go to the side, the back foot stays flat, and the arms are to the side. Okay, let's try that on the other side. Let's make an adjustment according to your chair. So, here we are in a chair position. You're going to take the right leg back to a standing lunge. So you're balancing the ball of your foot on the back. And then when you go to warrior one, you're going to flatten out the back foot. Turn your torso to the side. Again, just make an adjustment that's comfortable for you. None of this should hurt. We're just trying to make try, trying to make an adjustment from the, from the chair position, and then from warrior. Two, normally, it would be like up through here, right? So warrior two, you turn your hips and shoulders to the side. The back foot is flat, and your arms are to the side, and your gaze is going towards that front hand on warrior two. All right. Um, let's go a little bit further, so the next class we can progress a little bit more. Let's go to warrior two with the right arm forward. So from warrior two, I want you to think of your arms the same way with a laser beam shooting through your fingertips. The source of the energy, rather than starting from the shoulder, starts from your sternum, it goes out through the chest, and behind your shoulder blades, away from your back. So it should, not, it should feel not unlike one person standing in the front, pulling your fingertips forward, someone behind you pulling it back and they're playing a tug of war but nobody's winning so you're opening up so one way you can do the work is so we're in warrior two think of <clears throat> on every exhale you're gonna breathe in and exhale every exhale you're gonna reach your way about a half an inch more yeah so inhale exhale reach your way
half inch. Inhale, exhale, reach away and a half inch and hold. Remember to lengthen your spine, your energy is shooting to the crown of your head and the, the tailbone. And then from here, we're gonna transition to side angle pose. You're gonna put your front, front wrist down on your thigh for us. Take your arms to the diagonal here. So again, thinking of the diagonal, energy sh shoots from here, goes down the rib cage, down the outside of the foot to the ankle, and the, the complementary energy goes from the hip, up the rib cage, past your fingertips, you're opening up your rib cage. Be very aware that you're not rolling on that arch. This is called side angle pose. And then to balance that out, you're gonna keep the front knee bent and reach back to reverse warrior. Energy starts from the hip, goes up the rib cage, past the fingertips, and keep going in the back direction. Other hand reaches down the leg. Let's transition back to warrior two. Okay, let's do the other side. Let's do the other side for those of you who are in the chair. So here we are in warrior two. You're opening up from your chest, you're opening up from the shoulder blades, reaching away. You're lengthening your spine. Go to side angle pose where the back arm goes forward to the diagonal. Energy shoots from the hip, up the rib cage, past the fingertips, and then from the shoulder down the waist into the outside angle. Reach, 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 reach. Breathe. And then we're gonna to go to reverse warrior by leaning back and arching back, up and over. Energy starts from the hip, up the rib cage, past the fingertips, and back. And then back to warrior two. Let's go to prayer. Come forward with the chair position. Ah, let's take a moment. Let's, uh, so again, so those of you who are in mountain, you can also do the mountain in this chair position. The spine will be upright. Your toes are going forward. Your hips are going forward. The palms are going forward. You're lengthening your spine. Let's close your eyes and breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. I'd like you to bring your attention to your, the surface of your skin again. Close your eyes. Let's redirect our attention to sounds that we hear. And then back to your breath. And then open your eyes. Good, let's do um, a couple of core, quick core exercises. This is all, these are elements that I do in the, in the course of the class and we will build towards it. And there are also very different um, adjustments you can make so it's tailor-made for you. So let's start by interlacing your fingers behind your thighs, straighten your arms, and you're gonna round your pelvis under. Think of bringing your navel into your spine, rounding it under. Stretch out your back, committing the weight of your torso to your arms. Now we're going to engage your, our abdominals by slightly start to undoing your fingers. If you're not strong enough, you, want, you probably will need to bring your back forward a little bit. But hands are going forward, palms are facing down. So these arms are like, like um, oars, like riding, rowing a boat. <laughs> so you're reaching forward. You round your pelvis down and go as far as you can when you still have control and flex your ankles. And then from here, from your shoulders, you're just gonna beat, 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 beat. Make sure your navel is pressed into your spine to support your lower back. We're gonna breathe in for five, exhale for five. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, and release. Good. So, some of you may be going, oh, that's so easy. Well, what you want to do, is, that's fine. You want to build up to that as well. Um, you can bring your back a little bit further down. Yeah, so it's like, um, uh, and or, you can lift your heels up. Okay, so 
Again, let's try this. You're going to sit upright, uh, interla interlace your fingers, straighten your arms, curl your pelvis under, commit the weight of your torso into your arms. Start to undo your arms, roll down as far as you can where you still have control, and then inhale two, three, four, five, exhale two, three, four, five, inhale two, three, four, five, exhale two, four, five, inhale two, three, four, five, exhale two, three, four, five, inhale two, three, four, that's enough. Inhale, lift up, lengthen your spine, and then float your arms down. So you bounce your legs out. So the reason why you uh, flex your ankles is so that you take the work out of your thighs. It also helps to do your balance. Um, let's do one more set. Um, so next time we can just jump forward. This is rolling down and rolling up. So you're sitting nice and upright as much as you can. Shoulders are over the hips. You're reaching up. From here, you're going to curl your pelvis down as far as you can go with your ankles flexed. And then inhale and lift. Exhale, curl down. Inhale, lift. Remember, navel into your spine. So you round it rather than flat. And then lift up. Good. I'm going to rotate to the front so of the camera so you can see the variation on that. Lifting up, you're going to exhale, roll down. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, roll down. We just did these, so now I'm going to give you the variation on this. And lift up to the side. Exhale, down. Inhale, lift. So you're going to do other hip, opposite hip, down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Inhale, lift. And then down and up. Lift. Good. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Stretch out the upper abdominal wall. Breathe. And good, all right. So now let's do some tricep work, some arm work. Your hands are shoulder width apart and they're right under, under your uh, shoulders. Bend your knees and lift your hips. Lift your hips up. Exhale, lift them, lower them down towards the floor. Inhale, lift up. Close to the floor, exhale. Inhale, lift and then down and up and then down. Good, so that's not the exercise. The exercise is to lift your hips up as high as you can. You're gonna bend your elbows and then push away. Inhale, bend the elbows, exhale, push away. Inhale, bend the elbows, exhale, push away. Inhale, bend and push away. If, you, if this is, um, you wanna be a little more challenged, you're gonna extend one leg. Exhale, bend, inhale, stretch. Exhale, bend, inhale, stretch. Exhale, bend, inhale, stretch. Exhale, bend, other side. Exhale, bend, and a stretch. Exhale, bend, and a stretch. Exhale, bend, and a stretch. And a bend, and a stretch. Good. Okay, a couple of things about stretching. Every stretch has an anchor, and then the muscles that you're stretching. For right now, since we're doing our arms, bring the tops of your wrists together, lower it towards your navel, Keep pressing your wrists together and drop your elbows down. And breathe. So we're stretching the forearms. Okay. So our anchor essentially is pressing your wrists together and then dropping your elbows down. Breathe. Just bring your fingers towards you over the top and then down. Press your elbows down as you simultaneously press the heels of your hands together and then shake it out. Good. Um, up to now, we've been doing those, these uh, positions because I wanted to, to give you a foundation of the, what we're doing and um, um, some strengthening exercises. So what we're going to do is work a little bit now on the, on the um, uh, stretching. So I want you to think of the muscles as these big rubber bands, right? And they're gathered at the ends and, and attached to joints. So let's get up on our chair. You can stay on the floor, you can be on the chair. Um, the variation that I'm teaching right now is called pigeon. So if you're on the floor, you'll be sitting on your hip flexor on the front. Let's start with that left leg. And then leaning forward to stretch out the, the hip flexor. If you're on the chair, sitting on the chair, and you can bring your leg up to your thigh. We're going to be stretching this, this, this hip flexor muscle, this muscle that goes from the outside of your knee up the thigh to, the, to your hip joint. If that is too, too um, challenging for you, you can keep it down this way. Just keep it down. But you're, all you're doing is rather than the knee going upright this way, you have it turned out to the side like this. We're going to start with the upright chair position with the back nice and flat. You know, if you're up here, we're going to go here. And try to keep your back flat. <clears throat> And in this position, bring your back forward 
to what would be the diagonal chair. Right? So you, there's energy shooting through the base of your spine, through the crown of your head. You're not relaxing over the leg, but you're lengthening. And then come back to your upright chair. As you build flexibility here, you move your foot up further away. Keep this knee going down and go to your diagonal. So again, hip flexor, inhale, exhale. This is called pigeon. Go forward, inhale, exhale, breathe. We're gonna take three breaths and every exhale is gonna do a little bit more of an angle. Inhale, exhale, diagonal. Inhale, if you're on the floor, same thing. Exhale, diagonal. Inhale, exhale, diagonal. And then come up. From here, I want you to look over your shoulder, the same leg that's being bent. Try to see the back of your mat. If you're on the floor, try to see the, your foot behind you. Sitting up nice and tall. And then back to center. And let's do the other side. <clears throat> if you're on the floor, it's the other leg forward. On the hip, we're going to stretch out this muscle. You're, you're in the upright chair, your spine is nice and upright. You're going to take it, your torso to the diagonal. So again, your spine is invigorated, I mean, it, um, is electrified. And every exhale, you're trying to bring your torso a little bit forward. I would like you to think of those muscles, those rubber bands as being hydrated rather than brittle and dry. So just in your mind, uh, using your Gen energy, you're gonna, you're gonna image those muscles as being nice and flexible and hydrated so they can stretch being moisturized as opposed to being Brittle, 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 brittle. And then lift up. Take a breath in, lengthen your spine, and look over the shoulder. Inhale, exhale, breathe. Every exhale, you stretch a little bit more. And then inhale back to center. And release. Bounce it up, shake, 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 shake. So back to about anchors and stretching. Let's do a lateral stretch from here. So we're going to stretch the waist out this way very gently. So let's start with um, uh, the arm. So lift your arm up. And if you can, just drop the hand behind your shoulder. And to the extent that you can, you're going to use the other hand and push your elbow back. So we're stretching out the tricep that we just worked on the floor. Sit up nice and tall. So in regard to the anchor and the stretching of the muscle, we're going to stretch out this whole side by leaning over this way. But this hip is gonna be your anchor. So as we stretch over to the side, you don't want this hip to come up. And you wanna use your core, mus core muscles to keep this hip down, or whatever your, your perception is of how you keep this hip anchored. Take a breath in, and you're gonna exhale and lean over. Again, take a breath in, exhale, lean over. Take a breath in, exhale, lean over. Take a breath in, exhale, lean over. And breathe and stretch. So again, you don't want to lift this hip up. You're going to keep it down, and you can envision this. Use your your percept, your memory of high school biology, and these muscles, these bones, are leaning over, opening it up. Breathe. And lift up and open. Let's do the other side to balance that out. Arm up, and then down. You can use this if you want. It's not that easy to do if you're not used to it or you can just go lean over. So you wanna keep bringing your elbow back, we're stretching out your triceps. This is your anchor, this hip. Take a breath in, exhale, lean over. Again, breath in, exhale, lean over. Inhale. You can do this um, sitting on the floor as well if your legs are folded. Inhale, exhale, lean over. Inhale, exhale, lean over. And then lift up, and then float your arms down. So you could have done that sitting, we can also do that standing, but I, the, the concept that I wanted to introduce to you is every time we do a stretch, there is an anchor, and then there are the muscles that we're stretching. And the technique is, on the inhale, you draw your attention to where the muscle that you want to stretch is, and then on the exhale, you do the stretching. So for instance, let's say I'm going to, do my, I'm going to stretch my shoulder up. So on the inhale, I'm going to draw my attention to this muscle here. On the exhale, I'm going to do the work. So on the exhale, I'm going to pull my arm towards me and hold it. Breath in, draw my attention to these muscles. Exhale, gently pull the arm towards me. Again, inhale. Exhale, gently pull it towards me. 
and then shake it out. Generally, we hold those stretches for a little bit longer um, to get the full benefit of it. But the idea is every time you revisit that stretch, you'll be a little bit more flexible and um, we're gonna build on that. So take your other arm across, gently pull the arm in towards your chest, take a breath in. We draw our attention to the muscle that we're stretching on the inhale, on the exhale we do the work. Inhale, exhale we do the work. Inhale, exhale pull it towards you and stretch. Breathe, just allow the muscle to get learn a new muscle memory. And then we really shake it out. Good, so now let's do a neck and shoulder stretch. Um, remember I talked to you about that pushing down if you have crutches under your arm. Let's imagine you have crutches here pressing down, so you're not up here, you're pressing down. Keep that energy going, and you're just gonna lean your head to the other side. So we're not pushing or pulling, we're not gonna yank our head over. Just the mere fact that the weight of the skull is leaning this way, is working with gravity to keep going that way. You working to use your, um, uh, your lats here to push down on your armpits, and every time you, you, um, you breathe in, you're going to draw your attention to your neck and shoulders. And on the exhale, you're going to allow the weight of the skull to drop. Feel the stretch. Inhale. Exhale, allow weight to drop. Inhale. Exhale, push down and drop. Inhale. Exhale, push down and drop. We're going to take a few seconds just to let your body get into that stretch. Transform your body. Let your neck muscles and your shoulders breathe. Good. Now to come out of it, we're going to drop your chin forward and then roll your neck up to the center. Let's do the other side. Deep breath in. You're going to press down with this shoulder. Position the head so the weight of the skull is just going to drop to the other side. And let's do like four breaths. Inhale. Draw the attention to the side to your neck and shoulders. Exhale. Allow it to drop. Inhale. Exhale, allow it to drop. Inhale. Exhale, allow it to stretch. One more inhale. And release. Just breathe through that. Inhale, exhale. And then just drop your chin forward. And then roll up to your center. Um, just lift your shoulders up to your ears. And then pull them down. Up to your ears and then pull them down. Um, before we finish, we have a few more minutes left, we'll do a little demonstration about energy again. So from here, um, I talked to you about chi energy. We're going to build, um, so energy cannot be, uh, it's a finite amount of energy that's in the universe, and energy cannot be created. All of it is, is um, transformed you know, from solid to liquid to gas. Etc. So in our own, we can generate chi energy in ourselves though. So I want you to do this. I want you to rub your fingers, your hands together like this. And build some heat. Just to press and push, push, push. And then what we're gonna do immediately, is you're gonna make what's called a Zen Chi ball. And make a ball with your hands and your fingertips are touching. And even though there's obviously nothing in your hands, you might feel some energy within that space. A vibration or some heat. Let's do it again. Let's do the little heat. Chi ball. And now you're going to separate your fingers about a half inch or more. And even though they're not touching, if you focus that your, your sight between those fingertips, you might just feel energy jumping from one fingertip to the other. Okay, let's do one more time. Build up energy with some chi energy. And make it a ball. Let's separate the fingers again. And this time, get a sensation that you actually, maybe you can feel the energetic chi ball in your hands as you rotate it around. Okay, so let's do this. Splash it into yourself, splash it into yourself, splash it into yourself. Good, let's do another um, chi energy. Just close your eyes. 
So just imagine yourself sitting in a pool of water that's waist deep. Okay? You could be standing, but we're all sitting. So it's nice, cool water, cool, cool water, waist deep. You can think of being in like a, whichever your favorite waist deep, safe water. There's no sharks in the water. Uh, you could be in the ocean, you could be in a stream, you could be in a pool. But you're waist deep in cool water. Your legs are cooled off. And continue with that. Open your eyes. Just splash some of that cool water to your face. Breathe. So there's a reason why when you go by the ocean that um, you feel better. You know, uh, there are negative ions in the air and that affects you positively. And just the thought of you splashing cool water to yourself is a meditative exercise to, um, to cool yourself up. Build your chi energy. It's one of the many ways. Of course, the other way is just to go into a pool and splash through water. <laughs> All right. Um, but not, remember uh, what it feels like if you went to a wash basin and you filled up with water and you splash yourself, how much how better it feels. All of this stuff is about making you uh, feel better. Okay, so a couple of things um, which we'll get attend to in the next class is um, I talk about. Later on, I'll talk about Barbie feet, like when you when you do an extension on the floor. So Barbie, you know, Barbie has um, I don't know what she does now, but she used to wear high heels. And so rather than when we're on the floor and we're doing stretches, rather than a foot that's flexed like we have done when we were doing the tricep exercise, you would dig your heel forward, or rather than like a dancer where you reach with your toes, you're gonna reach for what I call Barbie feet. So the top of your foot is stretched out. And the ball of your foot is out like that, and you're reaching the energy shooting off of the ball of your foot. So that's what I talk about. Feet. Uh, so let's do. Uh, oh, I'm going backwards. One chi energy. The, I generally start the class with a qi gong energy. So chi, again, I told you it's about body energy, and gong is work. So that whole discipline, you know, there's tai chi, there's qi gong. Um, I've integrated some of that work into what we do here. So this is called the lymphatic chi kung exercise. You, what it is is the limb system is a circulatory system, and its main focus purpose is to drain toxins of our body. So there are pairs of lymph nodes, different parts of our body, and what happens is when you get up in the morning, you feel creaky, or like when you sit down for a long time, you get up feel creaky. Part of that is because your limb system shuts down when you're stationary. When you, um, so once you start to walk around, it gets going and the limb system starts to work and it starts to do its job of getting toxins out. So we kickstart the limb system by, for us, this qigong exercise, lymphatic qigong. You're gonna put your hand, your feet are, are hip width apart, toes are going forward, Soften your knees. So another thing about placement, um, your knee should be going over the center of your foot. Yeah, so it's like a hinge, your ankle and your, and your knee acts like a hinge. So rather than rolling in on your ankles, you're gonna go straight over the center of your foot or rolling out. You know? So you wanna be at a disadvantage if you start to walk like that, right? Or like that. So wanna, what we wanna do is train our bodies to be conscious at least, the knees are going right over the center of your foot. So from the beginning of our class, we talked about alignment. You're going to pull that zipper up, your spine is nice and upright, soften your knees. And just for our purposes, look over your knees as if you're looking over a cliff. The knee should be on the center of the foot or like your third toe. And then come back to your upright and straighten. So we're going to start to bounce. As you bounce, the knees are going over the center of the foot. Your spine is nice and upright. And your spine is like a piston. So the slow motion, rather than releasing your pelvis back, each time, you're going to keep that zipper pulled up, your pelvis is upright, and you're bouncing, like, and your back is like a piston, and you're bouncing up and down. Good. And bounce, 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 bounce. Read. Be conscious of your breath. <clears throat> and pat, 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 pat. So this is like tapping the ends of a loaf of bread, nice and gently. Your spine is nice and upright. Your knees are going over the center of your foot, and you're conscious of your breath into your nose, out your mouth. Keeping your spine engaged, you over your left shoulder. Back to center, over to the other side. And back to center, keep bouncing. So um, what we want to do is you rotate, when you rotate your spine, I'm going to stop for now. 
when you do rotate your spine, try to keep your hips going forward, so only rotating from your waist. So rather than reach, letting your hips go with it, you're gonna keep your hips going forward. So the headlights on your hips stay forward as you turn your hips, headlights on the shoulders to the side. Similarly on this side, all right? So now let's go bounce again. Both headlights are going forward, both sets, and then you're gonna like hitting the, the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, like breathe. You're conscious of my breath. Your spine is energy, energized. And then you're going to rotate over your left shoulder without letting your right hip come forward or your opposite hip come forward. Inhale, exhale, like breathe. Weight is between both feet. Back to center over to the other side. And then back to center. And like hummingbird wings, down, 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 down. Spine is upright. You're reaching away from yourself, your arms. And you like to breathe and rotate to your left. Keep the weight between both feet. What we're trying to get at is a rotation to the lower back. So you can think of like rotating the lower back and or turning your navel towards the side. But the weight stays between both feet and then back to center or to the other side. Look over your shoulder. And you like to breathe. And then back to center and straight back. And you like to breathe. Keep your spine nice and upright. Rotate to the other side, looking over the shoulder. Back to center, rotate to the other side. Back to center. And then sort of like, um, you can think of like bouncing a basketball. And you like to breathe. And let's try with our feet together. Bounce, 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 bounce. So even though we're, be be we're beating with our hands, it's still the weight of your hips dropping, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. This is your center of gravity. And let's rotate to one side, to your left side, look over the shoulder. Hips are going forward. You're trying to keep the knees right over the center of the foot. Trying to see the back of your back. Meaning back to center, over to the other side. And back to center. Take a deep breath in and out. Deep breath in. Sorry, and out and shake it out. Let's do um, a forward bend. Um, let me just kind of break this down really, really, oh, we're running out of time. I will attend to the um, different ways that we move up and down our spine, but it's really important right now that we take, let's come to the, um, generally I'll do a relaxation, I have to do a full class, a full body relaxation, a full re-energization, but we're just gonna do the energy, energization exercise, a little meditation. So on the re-energization, when I direct you to, you can sit in your chair on the floor. You can take a full, 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 big, big breath. And at the same time, simultaneously, you're gonna clench every muscle in your body you can think of. The big muscles in your gut, butt, your muscles in your abdominals, your shoulders, your arms, your face, your toes, everything, and then let it go, right? So again, the instructions are, when I tell you to, you're gonna take a deep, full, full, full breath. Like as if you have to drink, swim the length of a pool underwater, so you fully, 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 fully oxygenate. And the same simultaneously, you're gonna engage all those muscles, and you're gonna let it go. All right, let's try it one time. So let the air out of your body. Inhale, engage. Your toes, your fingers, your arms, your chest, your hands. And let it go. So on the, um, by, um, on the um, physical uh, level, when you take a deep breath in, you're oxygenating, right? And what happens, in, uh, what happens, the function of the lungs, all these capillaries, these blood vessels are in your lungs and they take all that oxygen and then they go to the rest of your body. When you constrict all those muscles, you, you uh, stop the flow, the, the, you know, the blood is circulatory, you stop the flow of blood and once you let go, all this oxygenated blood just rushes to your body. Let's do it one more time. Let the air out of your body. Inhale, engage. And out. Good. So, one other aspect of that is the spiritual aspect. So, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or you believe you have a spiritual, higher spiritual being or, um, or not. You could just think of it as just energy. But what I would like you to do is Light your body up. When you when you engage all this, let's take a deep breath. You're gonna light your body up. Bright, 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 and then let it go. Okay. So here we go. Just play along with me. Let the air out of your body. 
Inhale, engage. And out. Good, let's leave that alone. In the last few minutes of this class, let us do a quick um, exercise on gratitude. Just close your eyes and sit. So um, I always end every class with this exercise and it is what's going to be a touchstone for today. Think of someone in your life for whom you're grateful. It could be your dog or someone else in your life for which you're grateful. And this is our uh, practice in gratitude, capital G gratitude. So think of that person, think of that dog or your cat and um, just feel the emotion that you have of gratitude. And because it is an emotional, grounded, um, heartfelt experience, we're gonna draw your attention to the center of your chest, your heart center, your heart chakra. And I want you to so light, um, use your imagination, light up that heart, see heart center. So again, it's an emotional response. And let's say we don't have words. So you could go to that person and say, I'm so grateful for you being in my life, blah, 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 blah. You know, but what you wanna do is, let's imagine we don't have words and we're gonna express that by a light through our heart center. So that person is sitting there and they know this. They know that the, your expression, the gauge of your expression is from the light that you turn on, that you let them see. So to the extent that you are grateful, light your heart center up. Brighter, brighter, brighter. You can never have too much gratitude. And then let's light it up so great that you start to illuminate through the pores of your skin. It's so like an incandescent light bulb. And even more so, just light up the whole room. Light up your whole house. And this one thing for which you're grateful, we're expressing gratitude, um, represents all the things for which you're grateful. I know there's lots. So light up your whole neighborhood emanating from you through your house. And just come back to your breath. So one last thing, which is one of the most the, the fun things about this class, it is you. I ask you to choose um, an act of kindness for yourself. So do something, an act of kindness for yourself of self-care. You know, do an activity. You know, don't just think about it. Even though when you think about it, just bring a smile to your face. I would like you to do, commit yourself to doing something for yourself that makes yourself feel good. All right. Um, so that's really a, quite a bit of information that I put into your Zen cup. So hopefully the, it was a, um, a nice brew. You're going to drink all of it. <laughs> uh, otherwise, in the next session, I'll, ex I'll review what we've done. I'll expound on that. And by the time we get to the end of five, we'll have to uh, get you up to speed to an, a practice that's going to be appropriate for you. All right. So I want to thank all of you for the, letting me uh, share this with you. I hope you got a lot of that out of it because I'm, in truth, I actually get more probably not in truth I get more out of it than you do trust me <laughs> right so uh, until next class I embrace you with my thoughts embrace you with my words embrace you with my heart and have a wonderful day